In this video, I'm talking about a topic that affects a lot of people, hair loss. In fact, over 80 million people in the US are dealing with hair loss. The most common form of hair loss is something called androgenic alopecia. Now this is a big fancy term that just means hair loss that's related to your testosterone, which mostly relates to genetics. About 50% of men and 30% of women experience this. So what's actually going on here? Well, if you're genetically inclined, your body converts testosterone into something called DHT. Think of it as the evil twin of testosterone. Created by an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase, this sneaky little chemical binds to your hair follicles and slowly turns those strong, luscious strands into weak, flimsy ones. It's like your hair is getting an unwanted downgrade. For men, this usually starts in the front, near the temple and the crown of the head. For women, it's often the vertex, or right on top. So what can we do about it? One common option is minoxidil, better known as Rogaine. This is a topical treatment that, after a few months, can help hair regrow. But here's a kicker, you gotta keep using it. If you stop, their new hair says see ya and falls right back out. And for the gents, there's finasteride. This blocks that enzyme I mentioned earlier, 5-alpha reductase, and help keep DHT from messing with your hair. But it's a marathon, not a sprint. Results take about a year, so patience, my friends. For women, there's less evidence, unfortunately. But hair loss doesn't just stop at genetics. Let's talk about other reasons you might be shedding. Medications can cause hair loss, especially chemotherapy or toxic agents. The good news? Your hair will usually grow back once you stop those treatments. It's like hitting the reset button. Then there's something called telogen effluvium. Fancy, I know. This is where you can lose up to 200 hairs a day, which can feel like you're shedding like a golden retriever. In this condition, more hair than usual gets pushed into the resting phase, and then it falls out. It's often triggered by major stress, illness, surgery, or even childbirth. But don't worry, this type of hair loss usually resolves itself within six to nine months after the trigger is removed. Think of it like a temporary shedding season. Another form of hair loss that can look a little different is alopecia areata, literally bald spots. It happens when your immune system decides to wage war on your hair follicles in certain area, leaving these random patches of baldness. Luckily, in many cases, the hair grows back on its own. If it doesn't, steroids, either injected or applied topically, can sometimes help speed things up. Now, let's talk about infections. Scalp infections, like tinea capitis or seborrheic dermatitis, which is a fancy way of saying fungal infections that causes itching and dandruff, can also cause hair loss. The go-to treatment? Antifungal shampoos and selenium. But these infections? Man, they're like that annoying friend who just keeps coming back. It's frustrating. It's harassing. Now, for the cutting-edge stuff, we're talking about stem cell treatment and PRP therapy. Stem cells help reactivate those lazy hair follicles, and PRP, or platelet-rich plasma, takes your blood, spins it down, and concentrates the good stuff, injects it back into your scalp, to stimulate hair growth. There's some promising evidence for both of these treatments, but the downside? They're often not covered by insurance, so if you're going down this route, be ready to pay out of pocket. And there you have it, from genetics to stress to even funky fungal infections. There are lots of reasons for hair loss, but now you've got the knowledge to better understand what's going on, and maybe even stop it in its tracks.